Hello dear friends, I hope you're doing well. What do we do after we have managed to pin down our variables? Variables in general have the same level of transparency. That is to say, do they have the same level of concreteness? And by the same token, the same level of abstractness. What is variable operationalization? Why should we worry about operationalizing our variables? First things first. After we have managed to pin down our variables and to know about their types and their nature, we need to proceed with the next step, which is the formulation of hypotheses as a hinge towards research design in general. Researchers at this level of are often faced with some stumbling stones, and this is the answer to question number two. Variables do not submit to measurement in the same way. Some variables are more transparent than others. Some variables are more concrete than others. Some variables are less likely to generate controversy and disagreement than others. When I have a variable like years of experience, age, weight, there is hardly any chance for disagreement to occur when it comes to measuring these variables. Because age can be measured in terms of the number of years, and weight in terms of kilograms or other units and years of experience in terms of years since the beginning of, of the experience being described. But how about concepts as abstract as persuasiveness, anxiety, motivation? Here, researchers need to define these variables. If uh, this is successfully done, then the researcher has successfully operationalized his or her variables. Now, what is variable operationalization? Very simply, variable operationalization refers to the fact of defining a variable in order to be able to manipulate it and accurately measure it. But how do we proceed with this operationalization of variables with abstract concepts? One solution is to look for the indicators of the variable. Each variable may have a number of indicators, and we need to select some of these indicators and make them clear at the very beginning and do the rest of the study with this operational definition of variables in mind. Let's take the example of the psychological variable anxiety. There are a number of levels for defining anxiety. We might choose to define it in terms of physiological symptoms, psychological symptoms, behavioral symptoms, emotional symptoms, and so on and so forth. Researchers are not supposed to uh, cover all these indicators in their definition of a variable like anxiety, but they need to indicate which of the which aspects they will uh, be dealing with in their study, and that's the that would be the operational definition of this variable of anxiety. Now, how do people do this? This will all depend on the purpose of the researcher, the dominant trend in the literature. These can be these operational definitions are often validated in other studies, and uh, there is uh, somehow uh, an agreement in the community about the way they are operationalized. Let's take another variable, which is the variable of fear. How do we operationalize fear? Like anxiety, fear can also be operationalized physiologically in terms of heartbeats and uh, rapid breathing. Behaviorally, this can be explained by silence, by being taciturn. Whatever aspect we take, we have to make sure that we define it at the very beginning. And in doing so, we are excluding uh, indicators that we will not be interested in in the study. And we should not uh, shy away from making it clear in the study that the indicators of fear will be indicator X, indicator Y, indicator Z, but indicator A, B, and C fall outside of the scope of this study. Again, this is not haphazard, this is not uh, uh, dictated by the hunch of the researcher, but rather by the tendency in the literature to choose which indicator for which variable. A number of researchers, including Tuckman in 1988, talk about a number of approaches to the operational definition of variables. This author talks about three main approaches. An approach that is based on manipulation, one that is based on dynamic properties, 
and the third, which is based on static properties. An operationalization approach based on manipulation refers to a course of action whereby the researcher creates a condition so that the state or the phenomenon being studied will occur. The researcher here causes the phenomenon or the state to happen. For example, if we have a variable like positive self-expectation of success, the researcher or the teacher can tell the students their high IQ scores and that these high IQ scores will help them pass their exams with no difficulty whatsoever. The resulting reaction of the student can be taken to be an indicator of the positive self-expectation of success. The second approach is an operational definition based on dynamic properties. An operational definition based on dynamic properties refers to a situation where the subject being observed takes an action that, uh, that forms an indicator of the behavior that is being observed. Let's take the property of sensitivity. How do we operationalize this in the classroom, for example? Sensitivity in a teacher can be observed in the way he uh, smiles uh, to the student, the way he would care if a student, for example, is not, for example, does not show uh, facial expressions that, of happiness when, for example, uh, a student sits out to cry, etc. So this is dynamic property because here, uh, the teacher who is observed, you know, uh, is the one performing the action. So we observe this behavior in action. And the third and last approach is the operationalization by means of static properties. And here, this refers to uh, what the subject says about himself or herself, as when, for example, we ask respondents questions about um, whether they are motivated or not, whether they are anxious or not. So the things that they say uh, it, it characterize a static property of, these, uh, of this behavior because it comes from within, it's an internal, it's self-reported. So what people say about themselves in questionnaires or interviews typifies, uh, you know, the operationalization of a variable uh, based on static uh, property. Why is the operationalization of our variables an important step in our study? First, when we operationalize our variables, we do not run the risk of uh, being misunderstood by uh, our audience, by jury members or by the, the people who will read the work after. Whatever criticism that might come uh, about in relation to, for example, missing this or this aspect of this phenomenon uh, in your study, you can uh, respond to that. Uh, at the very beginning, I made it clear that uh, I will treat aspect X, aspect Y, and aspect Z. Uh, and I made it also clear, for example, that aspect F and aspect uh, M, for example, lie outside of the scope of the study. So this is one of the advantages of operationalization. But there are more important reasons for uh, this operationalization process to be given enough time and enough reflection. There is the uh, advantage of replicability if your variables are not operationalized. Someone will come after you and will uh, conduct the same study to see if he or she will achieve the same results as you. The chances are that this individual, this researcher who will come after you, will, will investigate just one indicator from one variable, but two or three that lie outside of what you studied. So replicability is not possible here. This will not help because for a study to be replicable, we need to uh, consider the variables the way they are considered in the, uh, in the study that we are purporting to replicate. A researcher who would like to replicate a study on anxiety should, for example, take the same indicators if they are psychological, physiological in study A, then they should be the same uh, indicators in the uh, study that, that, that seeks to replicate the previous one. Um, but if they take, for example, here we have psychological indicators and here you have physiological indicators, then that's a new study with, with new indicators of the variable. When we operationalize our variables, the way we reduce them to uh, measurable indicators will automatically give us a clear idea of the instruments that we will use, of the uh, design in general, it, it also dictates the shape of the design. Is it experimental design and experimental? Is it exploratory, exposed facto? This will all depend on how we uh, make the otherwise abstract 
concepts in our variables measurable and concrete. Some operationalizations of a variable can be amenable to an experimental study, but others can uh, just uh, dictate uh, a design which is uh, less rigorous, like the exposed facto, for example, design. There is another advantage that uh, relates to the validity and reliability of the, of the work. What is validity, after all? Uh, we will come back to this later on, of course, but val very briefly, validity refers to whether the study investigates what it purports to investigate. That it's one way of saying that we, what we say, the very, what we declare in our hypotheses and our uh, objectives should be uh, reflected in our design, in, our, in the rest of the process. That's validity. I cannot start, you know, by aspect X and Y, aspects of the variable, aspect X or Y of the variable, and then end up analyzing aspect Z.